let me say that uh, just few words before I would like to have more discussions. Uh, can we have the next slide, please? And uh, I should say that uh, brain brain inspired computation is very much uh, uh, driven. But what we know about how the brain works and the brain has uh, uh, billions of neurons and trillions of connections that are evolved through evolution. And the brain is learning in a very sophisticated way. We have learning at different levels as nanoseconds, milliseconds, minutes, hours, many years of evolution. This learning in the brain can be simulated and can be, uh, can, can be used as inspiration for developing novel methods uh, for computational intelligence. Next slide, please. And uh, here is one example how we learn to recognize an object and, and, and to pick up this object. For example, recognizing this cup and picking up the cup, uh, looking uh, uh, and uh, activating different areas of the brain, different clusters, one after another, connecting them into a trajectory that uh, after seeing the cup, I can move my hand and, and pick it up. Uh, so this is the knowledge we build through learning. And that is how we, uh, we, 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 we process, how, how, uh, it's, uh, how we live uh, with this environment to capture knowledge, to learn these trajectories of activation in the brain. And these trajectories uh, uh, can be represented in a, in a simulating environment as uh, uh, spatial temporal rules, because here we have both space and time of activities. Next slide, please. Uh, and uh, the recent development of uh, artificial neural networks led to the, the development of the third generation, so-called spiking neural networks, when uh, the information is represented not as colors, but as uh, 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 units or spikes at a certain time. So spike is nothing without time of its spiking. So we have the spikes in different spatial areas at certain time, and that makes patterns. These patterns are learned in the brain and can be learned in artificial neural networks like spiking neural networks. Next slide, please. And here we have different types of learning. For example, we have uh, unsupervised learning uh, where we have for example, spike time dependent plasticity, where two neurons learn their connection weights based on the time of spiking. So connections, they learn time in their, in, in their values. So this is different from traditional neural networks or deep neural networks, where time is not learned in the connections. And in our brain, we learn time. And in these spiking neural networks, they learn time of activities. Next slide please and uh, the question is how do we encode external information into spike sequences then different ways they can also be inspired by the human brain by the retina that transfers pixels based on their changing of brightness into spikes or cochlea that actually has neurons that react to certain frequency of the sound and this frequency activates neurons to emit spikes and to send these spikes further to the auditory cortex and we can see some other we, we have some other methods for learning for example supervised learning next slide please uh, where we can train spiking neurons to emit a spike at a certain time when certain spatial temporal pattern is presented to the spiking neuron. Next slide, please. And we have some uh, systems that develop as evolving systems when uh, neurons are created, connections are created rather than we have a fixed structure that is fixed forever. No, I think we, we can have uh, with some methods called dynamic evolving spike neural networks, we can create systems that evolve their structures. Next slide, please. And uh, having this 
uh, theoretical aspects of spiking neurons, spiking neural networks and learning, we can build so-called brain-inspired architectures and we can have a brain template used to structure the spiking neural network. Spiking neurons in a three-dimensional space and every neuron from this space has certain correspondence to areas of the brain. So we have a brain uh, structure here. Next slide, please. And he, he, this is one, one of the such brain-inspired structures is called NewTube. And NewTube is uh, developed to capture some data and to learn connections from the data so that after learning, we have patterns, as I showed before. We have trajectories that are learned from the data. And the learning is local learning. We change connection weights between two neurons, the time of the, but during this learning, they connect to each other and they make patterns. They make trajectories. They create knowledge. Next slide, please. And here's how, how they, they work. They, the, the, the system, the spiky neural network, three-dimensional brain-like, uh, brain-inspired, takes some data, input data, and creates some connections. And these connections are created based on some rules, local rules, like spike time dependent plasticity. But as I said, patterns are created as a result, global patterns from through local learning. And these patterns represent certain actions, certain classes, and that could be used for classification, for prediction, for brain data analysis, and not only from brain data analysis, but for some other spatial temporal or temporal data modeling. Next slide, please. Uh, to design an application system based on these principles, we have to go through certain uh, phases and certain procedures. For example, analysis of the data, uh, designing the reservoir or the structure, uh, encoding the data, learning this system, etc. And all this uh, is, is, is uh, uh, so-called the design procedure that we have to go to design our application. Well, the brain has was, was designed through evolution for many millions of years. Now we have, probably we can design a system that uh, is brain inspired within a few hours, but that is due to the technology. Next slide. And some applications, uh, the, the applications are, of course, uh, broad applications and, and the brain is uh, uh, it's a universal learning machine. We, we can learn languages, we can learn actions, uh, we, can, we can learn to, to speak, we can learn to, to act, we can learn uh, to play soccer or, or, or cricket. So it's a universal machine and we can learn to protect ourselves, to predict events that can hit us, kill us. Uh, and that is something that we can also implement in, in artificial systems. We can, uh, we can train them on audiovisual si si signals, on speech, on image, on, on movies. We can train them on biological signals like brain signals, CEG, fMRI. We can, we can train them on multisensory streaming data like seismic data. And I'll show some applications in the next slide. Next slide, please. So here we have trained uh, different uh, spiking neural network systems on different music by com composers and uh, these composers are here we have uh, Beethoven, Bach and Vivaldi and we can see the patterns that are learned are different from different composers and the patterns uh, are learned through the so-called uh, stereo learning because in a brain template of a spiking neural network we can have left and right hemisphere that re represent <laughs> Because about, uh, uh, we got this part called my attention. Uh, uh, no, always I brought my attention, but I sorry to stop you because I was, uh, uh, I've been reading a book about TensorFlow.js, which, which is deep learning in JavaScript. And I found a project by Google uh, in which you can play and the computer will make for you like a, like a, like a, a drum. 
You don't have a drum, yeah. so the computer is your drum. And the computer was pretty good. So is, it, is this the same? Do you think that he uh, is able to learn the music? For example, if I want you to, to play Beethoven, for example, but I don't know how to play Beethoven, but I want I wanna, I wanna make a beat. I want to I wanna ask the computer to make the beat in the background, like a bass, using Beethoven. Uh, yeah. Is it composing song? I, I, can you please explain it better? Yeah, that, 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 that is possible to... Can you have the next slide, please? Thank you. So, uh, in terms of vision, we can, uh, we can uh, substitute the current systems that use camera to capture frame-by-frame frame information, we can use the so-called dynamic vision sensors where every pixel is transformed into spikes. So the system can react uh, much faster. Next slide, please. And this could be used for detecting moving objects and very fast moving objects as well. Next slide, please. Uh, and the methodology, of course. Next slide, please. So we, we have series of... Uh, uh, we can use it for brain data analysis, for EEG, fMRI, next one, uh, encoding the data, learning the system, uh, and uh, evaluating the, 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 the connections and classifying the, the pattern. Next slide, please. Uh, also, virtual reality, how we work in a virtual reality and how our brain uh, reacts to virtual reality. Do we have sickness, uh, cyber sickness or not? can be also modeled. Next slide, please. Seismic yeah. data can be used to as a spatial temporal data that is used uh, to build patterns, predictive patterns of earthquakes. And this is one particular uh, application that is uh, currently uh, being developed uh, in collaboration with an international team. Next slide, please. And the future, of course, is taking more information as bio and neuro, neuroinformatics uh, is, is growing areas and this information can be used uh, to, to, to develop new systems. Of course, there are some ethical problems uh, and I would recommend one uh, 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 website which is called mindthegap.ai uh, that uh, discusses ethical problems. Next slide, please. And uh, the implementations uh, neuromorphic are from simple computers that we, we have uh, to, 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 the, to, to implement spiking neural networks and brain inspired to neuromorphic uh, platforms. Next slide, please. And neuromorphic platforms, uh, they realize spiking neurons as millions and billions of them within chips and balls. And here we have uh, Spinnaker as an example by Fulber, and we have uh, Giacomo Indiviri and Toby Delbrook and Martin Martin McGinnity from Alstom. Next slide, please. And uh, of course, the future is in this direction. Uh, and uh, I have discussed uh, some future directions as uh, human computer interaction based on common uh, plat common tem uh, platforms uh, and in this book. Next slide, please. And this is my group. Thank you. And I, I, I'm happy to, to take some questions.